Hey everyone, Nick Licamelli here. Today we're talking about why you may want to consider muscle length as a factor when deciding which exercises to perform and how to execute those exercises. First, let's define what I mean by muscle length using the quads as an example, particularly the rectus femoris muscle. The rectus femoris originates on the pelvis and joins the other three quad muscles to collectively insert on the tibia or shin via the patellar tendon. All of the quad muscles work to extend the knee, but because the rectus femoris crosses the hip joint, it is also responsible for hip flexion or actively bringing your knee up to your chest. In order to fully stretch a muscle, we must essentially do the opposite of what it does when it contracts. So for the three muscles of the quads that don't cross the hip, simply bending the knee would provide a maximal stretch. However, in order to fully stretch and thus lengthen, the rectus femoris, we must bend the knee while extending the hip. This position is not achieved in most traditional leg exercises like squats, leg presses, seated leg extensions. And while those exercises are all great, exercises like the lying leg extension, sissy squat, reverse Nordic, and standing leg extension simply provide a potential upgrade and put a little more tension on the rectus femoris. While probably not a silver bullet to Tom Platt's quads, there is evidence to support that adding some of these potential upgrades may help further your quad development. The research seems to support the idea that training a muscle in a lengthened position may be superior for hypertrophy. Placing a muscle in a lengthened position increases mechanical tension within that muscle. And in his landmark 2010 systematic review, Dr. Brad Schoenfeld showed us that mechanical tension, muscle damage, and metabolic stress all can play a role in muscle growth. Among others, a 2019 systematic review by Orenchuk and colleagues, as well as a 2019 systematic review by Schoenfeld and Gurdjieff showed that training at long muscle lengths generally led to more hypertrophy. Furthermore, a 2021 study by Pedrosa and colleagues hot off the press showed that training with partial range of motion at long muscle lengths during a leg extension led to more growth than training through a full range of motion. However, more research is needed to make any solid statements at this time. Okay, so now that we know that training at longer muscle lengths can improve mechanical tension and possibly lead to enhanced hypertrophy, we can easily put the principle into practice with a little knowledge of anatomy. Let's quickly use the biceps, triceps, and hamstrings as other examples. The biceps has two heads, the long head and the short head. The long head, you guessed it, is longer than the short head and actually crosses the shoulder joint. Similar to the rectus femoris, the long head of the biceps therefore acts as an elbow flexor and a shoulder flexor. So in order to fully stretch that long head of the biceps, we must place the elbow in extension and the shoulder in extension. Think of an incline dumbbell curl or a behind the back cable curl. The triceps has three heads, one of which, like the biceps long head, crosses the shoulder joint. It acts as an elbow extensor, like the other triceps heads, but also a shoulder extensor. Therefore, in order to fully stretch that long head of the triceps, we must place the arm in elbow flexion and shoulder flexion as in an overhead triceps extension or a lying triceps extension where the arm is allowed to drift overhead. The hamstrings are made up of the semimembranosus, the semitendinosus, and biceps femoris, which has a long head and a short head. All of the muscles of the hamstrings cross the hip joint, similar to the rectus femoris, except that short head of the biceps femoris. Therefore, in order to fully stretch the hamstrings, we must place the leg in knee extension and hip flexion as in a seated hamstring curl or Romanian deadlift. Keep in mind that there are factors that may limit your ability to achieve these fully lengthened positions. If you're unable to get into the lengthened positions without excessive compensation that would decrease effectiveness and safety, or if any of the positions cause pain, don't sweat it. Keep the movement to whatever range feels best for you. You can always work to gradually expose your body to the lengthened positions over time. In his review in Mass, Greg Knuckles explains that, while long ranges of motion are generally preferable, the degree to which training through a long range of motion will ultimately matter probably varies exercise to exercise. However, I think it's important to, at minimum, make sure you're training through the hardest 
part of a range of motion in order to maximize tension on the target muscles. So don't feel the need to force it. As long as you have the big rocks in place like adherence, progressive overload, a solid nutrition plan and recovery plan, you should be good to go. But since you're a follower of 3DMJ, I'm confident that those things are already in place. Thanks so much for watching and if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out.